younger when I was here, but you all were a couple of years ago. So uh, the school asked me to come back. We just wanted to make sure we we're going to get rid of you this year. <laughs> we are, are we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Now, how many of you are going on the four year or two year college? This is me. Everybody? Everybody. That's great. That's terrific. Congratulations to y'all. Thank you. And congratulations to your parents as well. Because they're as big a part of this as you are in making sure you get what you need. I want to talk just for a couple of minutes um, about the environment that you're growing up in and what you're going to face as you go forward. You know, the world is a lot, lot different place than when I was in your shoes graduating from high school, right? Even when I graduated from college, even when I graduated from law school. <coughs> now, with the internet and satellite technology, uh, we can be Skyping with somebody in Beijing in a matter of seconds. The world's economy is mobile. And multinational corporations are not so necessarily concerned with geographic boundaries as we have been in the past, they are concerned with the international economy. They are concerned with international trade. And the world is a much, much smaller place than it's ever been before. And that's the environment, the marketplace, if you will, that you guys are going to be going out into. You're going to meet and compete with kids from all over the world, in college, and beyond. So, as it used to be, you know, we would be competing, we'd send our kids out to compete with, with students, with young people from Belchertown and Brockton. Now, you're going to go out and face a world where you're in competition with uh, kids from Brussels and Beijing and Brazil. That's the marketplace today. Um, so, the skills that you learn here, whether they're the skills you learn in the classroom, or the interpersonal skills and discipline that you learn by being a part of this academic community are going to be transcendent. They're going to go with you wherever you go. And so I just think that this is probably the most significant experience of your life. Because being here now is setting the stage for all that you're going to be and all that you're going to achieve going forward. So take this skill set. Take these tools that you've been given in your toolboxes. Take them with you and use them, but use them wisely. Uh, four years is going to go by in the blink of an eye, just like the time that you spent here. It seems like just yesterday, right? When you first came in here and said, what's this all about? How's this going to be? <laughs> That's what's going to happen when you walk on these campuses. You know, it's going to be different. Now you're the big nuts on campus. You're going to be back down on this low run on the totem pole, wherever you go. You'll build yourself back up. But you've got the self-esteem, the character, and the tools to make it in whatever environment that you're going to go into. So I'm very confident, but I'm very, very proud that Chicken is able to host this and that we're able to support the endeavors here at uh, the Hammond Charter School of Science. And so I wanted to come by before you all graduated, because I know I couldn't make it to the banquet, but I wanted to come by it and uh, uh, you were good enough to set this up so that we could meet, uh, so I could congratulate you on your success before graduation, but also just to have a conversation. So I'm more than willing to answer any questions that you have or anything that you might have on your mind. The, uh, the floor is open to any topic, so uh, feel free, uh, whatever you want to talk about. And yes, I thought the Connecticut girls were really good last night. <laughs> <laughs> For about 10 minutes of the game, uh, they were, I was thinking that Rick Pitino was sitting there going, man, the way they're playing, they could beat my Louisville men. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a great example of collegiate basketball. I hope nobody still has a Louisville. <laughs> So you have any questions, guys? Oh, oh. I'm going to let go. He just is bad. Any questions? So we have a, a boss here. I was talking about the wrestling. He was uh, president of our city of Chicopee. On the initial level, can we talk a little bit about this bus? What was his experience? And what was his experience? Was this great? Came back. 
different states, our U.S. What weight uh, classification? 138. 138. I had like over 100 kids in my way. Well, congratulations. That's quite an achievement. That's great. Where are the nationals? Where were the nationals? Iowa. Whereabouts? Cedar Falls. Cedar Falls. That way I can, when I see the mayor of Cedar Falls this summer and, at, at our national meeting, I can surprise and say, hey, how was, it, how was the wrestling championship? Yeah. How'd you know about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any now, actually, uh, I had the opportunity in January to go to the president's inaugural, and while I was down in Washington, I, I got invited to something called the Sister Cities Inaugural Ball. And uh, Sister Cities is uh, an organization that fosters uh, international relationships between communities. Uh, so in the United States, we may foster a, a, a relationship with uh, a variety of different cities around the globe. So we may have one in China, one in Japan, we may have a couple in Europe, we may have one or two in South America as sister cities. And we uh, share knowledge, uh, share culture, uh, share uh, experiences, and sort of, again, making the world a smaller place. But the thing that struck me most, uh, and, and we had about, uh, I think there were about 200 people at this one, um, and everybody's all dressed up in tuxedos, and I'm in a room, uh, and uh, the, the uh, Marine Corps band in full uniform, if you ever uh, get the chance to see them, uh, please do that because uh, it's quite thrilling to hear that particular band play the Star Spangled Banner and the Marine Hem uh, with full orchestra. It uh, sends a chill up your spine. But that's what they played as we came in uh, to the event. And in that particular room, uh, there were conversations going on in so many dialects and languages. Uh, it was just a remarkable uh, microcosm of the world. And, uh, and, and you know, it, it always reminds me, because a lot of times uh, my job is dealing with somebody's complaint because their street didn't get plowed uh, in the winter from a snowstorm, <laughs> or somebody stole a stop sign from their corner, <laughs> or, uh, you know, uh, somebody's trash didn't get picked up. And, and that's part of the job. And uh, the other part of my job is, is often representing the city and the nation's mayors in Washington uh, with respect to some of the issues facing our cities and, and, uh, and the people that live in them. Uh, so, you know, I, I sort of think globally, act locally, is, is some words that I live by. And I, I commend that to your attention as, as sort of a way to find yourself a place of significance in the larger world, and, and sometimes you, you think about things and you say, my God, this world is so big, how can I impact it? How can I have an effect on what goes on? There's millions and millions and millions of people in the world. How can I, how can I have any impact? Well, who knows who Jonas Salk is? Dr. Salk. Dr. Salk, Jonas Salk, invented a vaccine for polio. One person in a lab did that. Okay? And one of you or one of your peer group is going to have somebody talking about you because they're going to say, who knows who so-and-so is? That's the person that invented the vaccine for cancer. That's what one person can do. So don't limit yourself by saying, I'm just a, you know, an insignificant piece in the giant puzzle. You can be as big a piece of the puzzle as you want to be. The only limit is your, is your own drive and ambition. And the only one you've got to answer to at the end is the person you see in the mirror every single day when you get up. That's who you're answering to. And so if you can look yourself in the eye and say, whatever I'm doing, I'm giving it my all. I'm doing and being the best I can be in my particular sphere of influence. And that's all you owe to yourself and to your family. What you can be. And there's no limit to that right now. You are in such an amazing place that you can have the opportunities that have been presented to you. And your job now is to just grasp them, pull yourself up by the rings, and step into the next phase of your life. The phase that's going to set you up for your career, for your future, for your opportunities. And so, 
carpe diem may be one of the overused phrases of our time, but that is your call. That is your rallying cry right now. And you have an opportunity to seize the day. And all the days that are to come, so I'm, I'm very, very happy to spend a little time with you. I see the future written all over your faces. And given your successor, I can look to that future with some positive optimism. So I appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you today. Anybody else have anything else? Another question, guys? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what do you think of the school compared to the last time you came? It's much better um, in terms of the equipment. Um, you know, I think we didn't have any, any smart boards here at all at that point. Obviously, the music room uh, has grown great guns, and I understand that about two out of every three students is involved some way in the music program. So I think, uh, and obviously the student body has expanded, uh, given it's now uh, 6 through 12. Um, so I think charter schools are in a difficult place. Um, as a public official, uh, it is difficult to support funding for what is essentially a private school. So we're trying to find that happy medium. And I think charter schools continue to prove that there can be a difference. Now, it takes a lot for me to support a charter school because it costs the city of Chicopee about a million dollars now a year in revenue that's lost from students that come here and, uh, and also go to the, uh, uh, the School of Performing Arts in South Hadley and a couple of other charter schools in the region. But it's an important investment because one, it forces other educational institutions to look at what is it that charters are doing that are leading to success. When I go to the graduations at Chickabee High and Chickabee Comp, for example, there will be some 350 students in each school that will graduate. They have 1,200 in each of their student body. I'm here to tell you that they do not have class sizes of 14, 15, 16 kids. And that makes a huge difference for teachers to be able to focus on you, to follow up. And there are a number of other rules uh, and regulations that don't apply here that apply to the public schools. But I'm not a one-size-fits-all person. I believe that there are opportunities that, that people want to see. You know the reason why you're here? How did you get into this school? Somebody put your name in for a lottery, right? Mm -hmm. Who was that? Mom. Yeah, yeah. Now, every other student in Springfield and West Springfield and Ludlow and Chicopee had that opportunity. Well, not every other student, every other parent. When you take a student into a public school setting, if the parent has read to that child, that child will come into our public school system with a vocabulary of 10,000 words. 10,000 words. That's where they start off in K or 1. But if the parents haven't read to that student, they come into our public schools. Are you ready? They come into that public school with a vocabulary of 500 words. One word. All right? So you tell me who's behind the eight ball. If we don't capture that student and get them up to a skills level equal to the 10,000 word student by the third grade, we've essentially lost that child. Data will show us that that child is more likely than not, by a 60 to 40 rate, to be a dropout, which will lead to a variety of other social problems that you and I will end up paying for. So they, these are important things that we're trying to implement with, with preschool education and, and uh, all of that to try to get these students on equal footing. The point I'm making, though, goes back to the how you got here. You got in because your parents or someone who cared about you put you in a lottery. They cared enough to do that. And that, in your lives, may wind up making all the difference in the world. And so that's why there's a significant role for parents in this whole enterprise of trying to raise everybody up. So I want you to keep that in the back of your minds as you go forward in life, that 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of recycling of people that wind up in trouble or on public assistance or in uh, situations that society doesn't approve. A big reason for that is that the parents don't give them the skill sets, the tools, the support even, uh, that they need to have a productive life. Many parents who don't read the kids look at an educational setting as daycare, a break. So from 7.30 to 2.30, they got somebody else looking at after their kids. So they don't have to worry about them. That's not what the public schools are for. But again, the distinction is we have set up this system now in Massachusetts of charter schools. And it is expanding. We're up to, I think, 81 now. I think we have 81 approved. There is a waiting list statewide of over 30,000 students who want to go to a charter school. In this school alone, there are 800. Consider yourselves fortunate. But it shouldn't have to be that way. Someone's future, someone's success, the possible Jonas Salk who could discover the cure for cancer may not have gotten his or her name pulled from the lottery. Destiny, our destiny, our future shouldn't turn on that dime, on the pick of a name. Everybody should have this opportunity. Right now, politically, we're not in a situation where that can happen. But slowly but surely, it's changing. And you're part of the change. You're going to benefit from it. But your work here, your success on the MCAS, your achievements, the fact that two dozen of you, every single member of this class is going on, is something we can take and say, it's time to move this to the next level. Let's create some more competition. Let's create some more charter slots. <clears throat> and that's what you're, when you look back 10 years from now, and uh, you're going to say, you know, I was there. I was part of that first wave that changed education in Massachusetts. And your success is what is going to make that change continue and grow. Because if you weren't successful, if this place wasn't run as well as it is, they didn't instill in you the discipline and the desires that you now have, then we wouldn't be talking about expanding charter schools. We'd be talking about getting rid of them. That's not the discussion. The discussion has changed. The model has changed. The narrative has changed. So that now the discussion is how far and how quickly is the charter school movement going to grow? So that's a, that's a great question. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, if not, I'm going to have another cookie then. <laughs> I say one thing to the student here. There's a movie called Waiting for Superman. It's on YouTube. If you really want to see about high education levels in America, it's a true story of young kids in the urban city that's not getting a due process. It's called Waiting for Superman. It's not about Superman. It's about students in America. Check that movie out. It's about an hour and a half. Yeah. Waiting for Superman. I just, yes, I just got went by the school every single day, and, and this kid was going to a, to a real private school, and he noticed this kid's back and forth, and how the school was crumbling down. And, and I work in, in the corporate America. I'm telling you, corporate America does not look like we look now. You can go to the Hartford, Sun Life Financial, you barely can find probably two or three American born because we're not focusing on science and mathematics in this country. And this school focus on that. So it's a great lesson, believe it or not. Thank you. Mayor, on behalf of my student and staff, I'd like to say thank you. And we have gifts for you, as always. We have well, three things. First one, it is uh, that we're supposed to give this to you when you, uh, you know, for a banquet that we made for you for your Buddhist memorial. So this is this first one. And the second one is for your office. Write this down. And last time when you were here, we just got a little uh, cups, but this time. This time. 
We have to just present to you for your office as a uh, handmade pottery. So That's I'll let you give that That's to you. Beautiful. I wish that you can remember our students to our visit to our school. Let's think of one future. That's beautiful. Thank you. Please enjoy. And also our students, they have a bouquet for your lady. Uh, you can just make her happy as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. 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 Th